it was the philosophy, the um, mystery. Everybody says physics is, you know, QED. You know, you, this equation, F equals MA and it's absolute. But it's not, you know. Yeah. So uh, I discovered that uh, despite the fact that physics was very um, precise, it is not absolute. It's two different things. And that, that involves the philosophy. Um, and to me, the mystery. I don't know, I, mystique, you know, of, of the universe. And until today, you know, nobody really knows what this universe is about. No, I'm not talking about consciousness and whatnot. It's, you know, it's a physical universe that where there's such a big mystery. That is what um, motivated me. was interested in because I didn't know at the time was um, is this uh, um, not being uh, it's being creative I mean it, it's not having absolute answers uh, and that was the only thing that I had at that time English literature and art you know you express yourself in some way but if they had taught me philosophy then I would have known that what I was really interested in was philosophy Is you look at it from, as a scientist and then of course space is a little bit unusual but as a scientist I think you have to be uh, always aware that um, you're not there for the money and in fact that's why you do science um, your motivation is not about money if you want to talk about money you're going to do economics or accounting or something like that but scientists are moved by something else and that is what you have to be true to and uh, so when people do certain things uh, that uh, negate that value uh, for instance that you feel that you must be promoted as a professor or if you or you want to uh, publish only because you are paid 5,000 ringgit per paper that goes contrary to the value to the values that you should have as a scientist. That is the first thing uh, you have to overcome. But of course, as an incentive, universities nowadays are, they give money every time you publish a paper, I mean, uh, or, or write a book, you know. But you have to know your, your true self. As a scientist, there are, whether you like it or not, sacrifices to be made. You spend more time in the lab, but I don't know, I believe that that reward is in you having accomplished something. Not necessarily a Nobel Prize, and not all of us can get Nobel Prizes, but in the, somebody you teach, or even that paper that you write, you know, um, it's, it's been cited, or you go to a conference like you do now, present it, then your peers or somebody superior to you tell you what's wrong and then you learn some more and so on, you know, it, it just goes on forever. Now that is what should motivate a scientist. Uh, of course you need a salary to, to feed your children or drive that car. Uh, yeah, I understand all of that, what we call the hygiene factors. But. Um, to be really somebody great and eventually achieve that Nobel Prize. Say, okay, let's just go for the Nobel Prize. Then it's not a salary. It's something inside, this innate desire, passion to uncover secrets, whatever it is. So um, that is firstly you must have. Now that I'm thinking as a scientist, yeah? financially but the, the, the good thing is you will overcome that pain uh, mentally because you decide I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm walking away that's the word you have to walk away no matter how much because it's going to heal you in the end yeah. that is that integrity that you need
boarding school really molds you and makes you a person that you are really not sometimes to start with. Oh yeah, 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 it can. Imagine seven years, uh, you don't, your parents don't have that. 100% uh, seven years influencing you, ring the bell. You know, it's like um, when you see those experiments where you ring a bell and then the, 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 the rabbit does something and then you ring the bell again. Well, that's how we were for seven years. Yeah. Well, I don't know nowadays what the boarding schools are like, but it really can transform you. I think that's what it's about. You develop a sense of discipline because uh, if you deviate too much from a particular schedule, um, things sort of get messed up. You have a, only yourself um, to blame because the system is there and uh, you, con you have to fit in. But does not mean you have to conform because there are ways in which you can still, um, to me, explore things and really be yourself. And that's what I enjoyed most about TKC. I was able to explore and be myself without my parental backup system. And you know, the, the peer the backup is very hard. Hmm? Children can be very cruel, so um, we learn to survive. Yeah, it's uh, a Malaysian mindset that we must change. Because if you look at some universities, when they look at you, you, you know you have your profile, which you send to universities to see whether they accept you. Of course, if all of us get the same SAT, let's not leave you, but you have SAT results. But what distinguishes one person from another? It's the things that you do outside of school. And uh, let's say you want to go to Harvard or MIT. They see you who you volunteer for. Have you worked in a refugee camp? That sort of thing. And for a lot of these people who want to be successful in life, you can plan this. Kita ni tak biasa plan these sort of things. You build up a profile. And that profile includes volunteerism. Internship, of course, it gives you, you know, somebody has looked at you from the um, uh, from the perspective of an employer, potential employer. That's fine. But what is more, I mean, what really makes a person different is who you volunteer for, what you volunteer for, and they build up that profile quite deliberately.